So you wanna build a custom PC for video editing, photo editing, content creation, Minecraft, cat photos, but you don't know where to start. Three months ago, I built a custom PC specifically for video editing, but I made a mistake. Now, I also own a newish M2 MacBook Pro 14 inch model, which cost me around the same as this new PC build. Hold on, she wants to go out. Be gone. Cats, man. Whether it's a PC or a Mac, new computers can be expensive, especially when you're specking them out to edit videos. And unless you're Jeff Bezos with a million extra dollars just laying around in your bank account, you're probably like me where you have a limited budget to work with. So I'm gonna list out all the parts that I used along with some less expensive options and some more expensive options down in the description. Now, if you're keen, you might notice that I did actually make a mistake when putting this PC together. So if you think you know what it is, when you spot it, let me know down in the comments. The most important part of any computer build is the CPU or the central processing unit. It's like the brain of your computer, but it also performs important tasks like rendering out videos or transcoding, encoding, decoding video files. In my case, I chose the Intel i9-13900K. It's a 13th gen 32 core CPU, and typically the more cores that you have and the more gigahertz, so when you're looking at buying a CPU, look at the GHZ number. It's kind of like the speed of the computer. It's kind of like the amount of horsepower the engine of your car has. So in some cases, depending on the task, you might not actually need a super fast engine inside of your car. Other things like the off-roading capabilities of that car or the torque the transmission is able to produce can be equally if not more important. I hope this analogy is uh, making sense. For example, if you're inside of Lightroom and you generate previews or smart previews of your files, the CPU is what takes care of that task. So if you are importing a thousand photos at a time, 2000 photos at a time, and trying to generate those smart previews, a higher end, faster, more expensive CPU will typically perform that task better. Or if you're inside of Premiere Pro and you're scrubbing the timeline, in my case, with the Canon files, a faster, higher end CPU will allow me to scrub the playhead or pause and resume playback faster. And I'll link a video up here where the creator goes through and tests all these different video formats from all these different cameras to figure out whether or not you need a super intensive CPU or if a GPU is actually more important. All the components that you buy will get plugged in to your motherboard. It's kind of like the, the chassis of the car. In my previous PC builds, I didn't put as much attention into the motherboard, but now with USB 3.2 and USB-C where you can have 20 gigabit speed and 40 gigabit speed, choosing a motherboard that has more USB-C or more USB-C ports is actually really important. When you're picking your motherboard, make sure you're matching the socket type. In my case, it's an Intel LGA 1700 socket. And so I'm limited to choosing motherboards that have that type of socket. Some motherboards also have additional PCIe slots. Those are slots that kind of look like graphics cards, but they're usually below it and a little bit shorter. Those are what allow you to add extra USB-C ports or network adapters or extra peripherals that give you more ports on the back of your computer. But then on the motherboard itself, you also have NVMe M.2 SSD slots. And those are the slots where you add those super fast solid state drives. I'm gonna skip the specifics of hard drives for now, but if you're trying to figure out how to store all of your data, keep watching and I'll show you how I've got mine set up so that I never, ideally, never run out of storage space. You also have RAM or random access memory, sometimes just called memory. You can think of it as the, the short-term memory of your computer. It's, it's there when you have a program open, but as soon as you close that program or you turn off your computer, that all goes away. It's super fast and what it allows you to do is load and unload video files. So if you have a really big video project with lots of 4K video, maybe even some 8K video, having more memory or more RAM will allow you to edit that project a lot smoother. I've got 128 gigabytes of DDR5 in this new PC build 
And sometimes I find I'm even hitting that max limit if I've got multiple applications open, or again, I have a really big video project. But at a minimum, Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, all of these programs recommend at least 16 gigabytes, 32 as recommended. But if you're building a PC, RAM is really inexpensive, even if you go with some slower speed RAM. So you're looking at the MHZ or the megahertz, which tells you how fast it's gonna be. In terms of graphics cards, this might come as a surprise, but I'm using an NVIDIA RTX 3060. At the time of this recording, that graphics card is already a little bit old, but I actually reused it from my previous PC build, which I had put in as an upgrade last year. And again, because I'm using Canon R5 files, they don't tend to be very GPU intensive. So in my case, the graphics card is one of those specs that I could get away with doing something that was a little bit cheaper. Now, because I have that much memory and because I have that graphics card and that really power hungry CPU, it meant I needed a larger power supply. But I'll link a calculator that you can put in all the components that you're thinking about getting, and it will spit out a number in terms of what what type of power supply you should be picking up. Now, all of this, of course, is housed in a really nice looking fractal design case. I've been using their cases on my last few builds, specifically their silent cases. And this case is lined with extra acoustic padding and extra filtering so that instead of it being wide open and you have all this great air circulation, the air circulation is maybe a little bit less, but then the sound that comes out of the case is gonna be a lot lower. And that's perfect if you have a space like me where it's a living, working office bedroom space where maybe you're editing, rendering something over here, but then you're taking a nap over there and you don't wanna be disturbed by the fact that the computer is just extremely loud. And to make the computer less loud, I actually opted for a water cooling unit. Now this is a bit controversial because instead of just having a single fan, now you have a pump and multiple fans. So a lot of that comes down to the power optimization and what you set the speed of your fan and your pump to. Externally, I have two Samsung Samsung 4K UHD monitors, and then one extra monitor set up vertically so that when I'm recording videos, I actually have all of my notes on there. And the peripherals are nothing fancy. It's a Logitech mechanical keyboard and gaming mouse. Again, I'll link the exact models down in the description. If you're still trying to figure out how to optimize your PC because maybe you don't shoot as much video, maybe you're a little bit photo, I would say if you're video editing and you're doing 4K, definitely go for the most expensive CPU that you can afford. Photo editing doesn't require a super high-end CPU, but if you're exporting your photos, that's when having a higher-end CPU can come in handy. The advantage you have when building your own PC is that memory or RAM is really inexpensive, at least compared to upgrading it when you buy an Apple computer. So I would go with at least 32 gigabytes if all you're doing is photo, 64 gigabytes as a minimum if you're doing video. And then if your motherboard has four slots, get 32 and 32, and then keep the other two slots free so that in the future you can upgrade those. Data storage. In this PC build, I have three hard drives. They're all NVMe M2 drives. One is dedicated just to the operating system and programs. The other is my D or my data drive that's for documents and photos. And the third is a video only drive. So this is a V drive, makes sense, V for video. And that's there just for working projects. So this project, once I'm done, I'll offload it onto that video drive. I have all my video assets stored there as well. But if you wanna see more on how I've organized all my files and my file management, let me know down below because that, that deserves a whole video in itself. And then externally, I have a NAS for when I'm done with video projects or I'm done with photos, I'll offload everything to that. Now, if you're keen, you may have noticed the mistake and switch that I made partway through this video. In the first half, I was using a single fan Corsair water cooler to cool the Intel 13900K, which if you know anything about PC builds, that CPU is very hot because of all the power it consumes. At first, I didn't think it was a big deal, but I was actually hitting a performance block where as soon as the pump was going full speed, you know, full speed basically all the time, I found that my video editing was more stuttery and the playback wasn't as smooth. I actually had to switch out the single fan radiator water cooler for a triple fan model. But as soon as I switched it out, it solved that problem and I fixed the mistake. 
Now, when I upgraded this PC, the old PC I was using was an older AMD Ryzen CPU. And the challenge I had was that it wasn't able to smoothly edit video files. And so I was constantly making proxy files to make it just possible for me to edit. Part of the reason I built this machine was that so I wouldn't need proxy files so that I could just take my videos, drop them in, you know, drop in my log footage, color grade it, and not have to worry about, you know, proxy files if I'm creating a YouTube short or I'm just creating a quick piece of Instagram content. But for the larger video projects, I still create proxy files because I find it operates a lot smoother. And you might think, well, a Mac does it need proxy files? But I've taken the same project where I started editing on my MacBook and then I would hit a wall. So I'd end up having to create either ProRes proxies or create low resolution proxies so that I could keep editing it on my MacBook. So I do find that the Mac operating system, the Mac ecosystem is very good if you don't wanna think about doing a PC build, but if you are gonna get a MacBook or a Mac Studio, I would definitely upgrade again to 32 gigabytes or at least 64 gigabytes of RAM. In which case, after those upgrades, the MacBook and the PC build end up being about the same cost. But the advantage for me is that I have a lot of utility software, a lot of applications that still are designed for Windows only. Plus, I have the ability to add extra peripherals through a PCIe slot or add more memory when eventually I need to upgrade because I've run out. So keep all those things in mind if you're building a PC specifically for video editing. If you like this video, go ahead, leave a, leave a comment down below or hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. And until the next one, as we say, grab your camera, get out, and go shoot photos.